Question 1. A child is diagnosed with Kawasaki disease. The nurse knows to monitor for which complication. A. Myocarditis. B. Liver failure. C. Renal failure. D. Encephalopathy. Answer. A. Myocarditis. Rationale. Kawasaki disease can lead to serious complications involving the heart, such as myocarditis and coronary artery aneurysms. Question 2. A nurse is caring for an infant with hydrocephalus. Which of the following is a priority nursing intervention? A. Monitoring head circumference. B. Promoting infant stimulation. C. Encouraging prone positioning. D. Restricting fluid intake. Answer. A. Monitoring head circumference. Rationale. Monitoring head circumference is essential for infants with hydrocephalus to assess the progression of the condition. Question 3. A child with type 1 diabetes mellitus has a blood glucose level of 60 mg per deciliter. Which of the following is the most appropriate intervention? A. Administer insulin. B. Administer oral glucose. C. Encourage exercise. D. Restrict carbohydrate intake. Answer, B. Administer oral glucose. Rationale. A blood glucose level of 60 mg per deciliter is indicative of hypoglycemia, and the child requires immediate oral glucose to raise blood sugar levels. Question 4. A three-year-old child is suspected to have ingested a poisonous substance. Which of the following is the nurse's priority action? A. Induce vomiting. B. Administer activated charcoal. C. Contact poison control. D. Administer Ipecac syrup. Answer. C. Contact poison control. Rationale. Contacting poison control is the priority to get specific instructions based on the ingested substance. Inducing vomiting and administering activated charcoal or Ipecac syrup may or may not be recommended based on the specific substance ingested. Question 5. A child is receiving digoxin for congestive heart failure. The nurse knows to monitor for which side effect. A. Hypertension. B. Bradycardia. C. Hyperactivity. D. Diarrhea. Answer. B. Bradycardia. Rationale. Digoxin can cause bradycardia, and children are especially sensitive to this side effect. The child's apical pulse should be monitored before administration. Question 6. A nurse is caring for a six-month-old infant with a congenital heart defect. The infant is experiencing heart failure. Which of the following is a sign of heart failure in infants? A. Increased urinary output. B. Decreased respiratory rate. C. Poor weight gain. D. Hypertension. Answer. C. Poor weight gain. Rationale. Infants experiencing heart failure often have difficulty feeding and may exhibit poor weight gain, tachypnea, and diaphoresis, especially during feeds. Question 7. A child is diagnosed with celiac disease. Which food item should the child avoid? A. Rice. B. Corn. C. Wheat. D. Potatoes. Answer, C. Wheat. Rationale, children with celiac disease must avoid gluten, a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. Question 8. A nurse is caring for a child with suspected meningitis. 
which of the following is a priority nursing intervention? A. Initiate isolation precautions. B. Administer antipyretics. C. Encourage fluid intake. D. Administer sedatives. Answer, A. Initiate isolation precautions. Rationale, meningitis can be highly contagious, and initiating isolation precautions is crucial to prevent the spread of infection to others. Question 9. A nurse is preparing to administer immunizations to a two-month-old infant. Which of the following is an appropriate action? A. Administer the immunization in the deltoid muscle. B. Use a 25-gauge, 1-inch needle. C. Position the infant sitting upright. D. Administer the immunization in the anterolateral thigh. Answer, D. Administer the immunization in the anterolateral thigh. Rationale. For infants, the anterolateral thigh is the preferred site for intramuscular immunizations due to its adequate muscle mass. Question 10. A child has been diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia. Which of the following dietary modifications should the nurse recommend? A. Increase intake of milk. B. Increase intake of citrus fruits. C. Increase intake of red meat. D. Increase intake of fibrous vegetables. Answer. C. Increase intake of red meat. Rationale, red meat is high in iron, and its consumption can help address iron deficiency anemia. Question 11. A child is admitted with acute glomerulonephritis. Which of the following findings is the nurse likely to encounter? A. Hypotension. B. Increased urinary output. C. Periorbital edema. D. Polyuria. Answer, C. Periorbital edema. Rationale. Acute glomerulonephritis is often associated with periorbital edema, hypertension, and decreased urinary output due to decreased glomerular filtration rate. Question 12. A child with asthma is experiencing an acute exacerbation. Which medication should the nurse prepare to administer first? A. Montelicast, Singular. B. Albuterol, Provental. C. Fluticasone, Flovent. D. Prednisone. Answer, B. Albuterol, Provental. Rationale. Albuterol, a short-acting beta agonist, provides rapid bronchodilation and is the first-line medication for acute asthma exacerbations. Question 13. A four-year-old child has been vomiting and has watery diarrhea for three days. The nurse should assess the child for signs of a. Hypertension. b. Dehydration. c. Hyperglycemia. d. Hypothermia. Answer, b. Dehydration. Rationale. Prolonged vomiting and diarrhea can lead to significant fluid and electrolyte loss, making dehydration a primary concern. Question 14. A school-aged child has been diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD. Which medication is typically prescribed for managing symptoms of ADHD? A. Diazepam. B. Methylphenidate. C. Lorazepam. D. Fluoxetine. Answer, B. Methylphenidate. Rationale. Methylphenidate is a stimulant medication commonly used to manage symptoms of ADHD, such as impulsivity, hyperactivity, and inattention. Question 15. A nurse is caring for a pediatric patient with a severe peanut allergy. Which is the most appropriate immediate intervention if the patient is exposed to peanuts? 
A. Administer diphenhydramine. B. Administer epinephrine. C. Administer albuterol. D. Administer hydrocortisone. Answer, B. Administer epinephrine. Rationale. Anaphylaxis due to peanut allergy is a medical emergency and requires immediate administration of epinephrine to prevent severe allergic reaction and possible death. Question 16. A child is diagnosed with chickenpox. The nurse knows that this child is at risk for developing which of the following secondary infections? A. Meningitis. B. Cellulitis. C. Pneumonia. D. Urinary tract infection. Answer, B. Cellulitis. Rationale. Children with chickenpox are at risk of developing secondary bacterial skin infections, such as cellulitis, due to scratching and breaking the skin barrier. Question 17. A nurse is educating parents about preventing sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS. Which instruction should the nurse include? A. Place the baby on the stomach to sleep. B. Use soft bedding in the crib. C. Place the baby on the back to sleep. D. Overdress the baby to prevent chills. Answer, C. Place the baby on the back to sleep. Rationale. Placing the baby on the back to sleep is a key recommendation to reduce the risk of SIDS. Soft bedding, stomach sleeping, and overdressing are risk factors for SIDS. Question 18. A 10-year-old child has been diagnosed with juvenile idiopathic arthritis. The nurse knows to educate the family about the importance of which of the following. A. Immobilization. B. Regular exercise. C. Restricting fluid intake. D. High-protein diet. Answer, B. Regular exercise. Rationale, regular exercise can help maintain joint mobility and decrease stiffness in children with juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Question 19. A two-year-old child is brought to the emergency room with suspected iron poisoning. Which of the following symptoms is likely to be present? A. Hypotension. B. Constipation. C. Vomiting and diarrhea. D. Bradycardia. Answer, C. Vomiting and diarrhea. Rationale, iron poisoning in children can cause gastrointestinal symptoms including vomiting and diarrhea, and in severe cases, it can lead to shock and metabolic acidosis. Question 20. A child with cystic fibrosis is receiving pancreatic enzymes. When is the best time for the nurse to administer this medication? A. 30 minutes before meals. B. During meals. C. 30 minutes after meals. D. At bedtime. Answer. B. During meals. Rationale. Pancreatic enzymes are usually administered with meals and snacks to aid in the digestion and absorption of nutrients. Question 21. The nurse is caring for a child with severe dehydration. Which of the following findings would the nurse expect? A. Hypertension. B. Tachycardia. C. Bounding pulses. D. Increased urinary output. Answer. B. Tachycardia. Rationale. Severe dehydration often leads to tachycardia, hypotension, and weak pulses due to decreased intravascular volume. Question 22. A pediatric patient with a history of asthma is experiencing respiratory distress. Which of the following is a late sign of respiratory failure in this patient? A. Use of accessory muscles. B. 
tachypnea. C. Cyanosis. D. Wheezing. Answer. C. Cyanosis. Rationale. Cyanosis is a late sign of hypoxia and impending respiratory failure, indicating severe oxygen deprivation in the body tissues. Question 23. A nurse is preparing to administer vaccinations to a 12-month-old child. Which of the following vaccines should be included? A. Varicella. B. Hepatitis A. C. Human papillomavirus, HPV. D. Both A and B. Answer. D. Both A and B. Rationale. At 12 months of age, children typically receive the varicella and hepatitis A vaccines as part of the recommended immunization schedule. Question 24. A four-year-old child is brought to the clinic with symptoms of frequent urination, increased thirst, and unexplained weight loss. The nurse should prepare the child for tests to confirm which diagnosis. A. Diabetes mellitus, type 1. B. Diabetes insipidus. C. Hyperthyroidism. D. Cushing syndrome. Answer. A. Diabetes mellitus, type 1. Rationale. The symptoms of frequent urination, increased thirst, and unexplained weight loss are classic signs of diabetes mellitus. Question 25. A nurse is caring for a child with a ventricular septal defect, VSD. Which of the following clinical manifestations would the nurse expect to find? A. Cyanosis. B. Clubbing of the fingers. C. Harsh murmur at the left sternal border. D. Widened pulse pressure. Answer, C. Harsh murmur at the left sternal border. Rationale. A ventricular septal defect, VSD, typically presents with a harsh murmur due to the abnormal flow of blood between the left and right ventricles through the septal defect. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.